The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. They st and he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk, while you walk along? They stood, stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that indeed they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, and while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told him what has happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you see it? After some devastating event, it can be hard to move, let alone move forward. We see it this morning as we join these two disciples of Jesus making their way home to Emmaus after Jesus' crucifixion. When we have experienced hurt or disappointment, when we have lost hope or a loved one, we usually take the road home, often in silence. Once we are home, our tendency is to burrow in and hunker down. We hope sleep will be a little death of its own to ease our pain. It is seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. After a time of silence walking down the road, the two disciples began to speak to each other because somehow healing begins when we are able to give a voice to the pain, when we are able to talk about our losses and hurts. These two disciples on the road began to relive the crucifixion of Jesus. For them, it's back to a life that was even less than it was before they met Jesus. Some of you may remember a song by James Taylor that includes the words, sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Our hopes and possibilities can quickly be brought down by one thing or another. Perhaps when the bottom has dropped out for you, you might remember a conversation that helped you take a step or two forward down the road in that conversation, healing began. As these two disciples head back home to Emmaus, they are joined by another person. 
This stranger listens to their story of shipwreck, the death of their master, and the one they had placed their hope in. Furthermore, they told this stranger about a curious addition to the death of Jesus. Some women had returned from the tomb and told them that the body of Jesus was gone. The tomb was empty, and in a vision, an angel had told the women that Jesus was alive. Well, this stranger turns out to be Jesus himself, although the two disciples did not know it was him. On the road, walking together, Jesus opened the scriptures to them and told how God would accomplish God's purposes through the people, the events, and the history of God's people in relationship to the world. When the three of them came to the village of Emmaus, the home of the two disciples, they invited the stranger to stay with them to share a meal. It was in the breaking of the bread, in the sharing of the supper, that Jesus became known to the disciples. We traveled various roads here to our church today. We come here because this gathering called church is our home. Here, in God's word, here is God's word for us. Here is God's holy meal for us. If you need someone, someone here will listen to you, talk to you, or pray with you. Here in this, your home, Jesus will draw near to you. Jesus will walk with you in your life. Jesus will be a guest in your house through the Bible you read. Jesus is with you in your prayers. He is with you in your care for each other. Here is a prayer that gives witness to the presence of Jesus after his resurrection. Lord Jesus, be our holy guest our morning joy and evening rest, and with thy daily bread in part, your love and peace to every heart. Life happens, healing happens on the road we walk together. Your life with our risen Christ Jesus happens on the road, in the house, and in the meal we share. Faith happens in the friendship we share with Christ Jesus and with one another. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus be with you this day and on every road you travel. Amen.